Hello friends, it's Kik here, and in today's episode, we're going to discuss OpenAI, which has introduced a set of tools for tracking AI threats. Tesla, announcing that its Cybertruck features a swimming mode, though no one has dared to try it yet. Samsung, which is determined to be the first to release a mixed reality headset to the market. Electric Eel, setting a record for endurance among hybrid airplanes. A fully autonomous mini clinic without staff, and a NASA probe that transmitted a video via a laser beam from a distance of 31 million kilometers. Today we start with OpenAI, a company implementing new security measures to combat potential threats from artificial intelligence. OpenAI has created a security advisory group that will monitor the work of technical teams and provide recommendations to the management. A key component of the new security system is the use of risk assessment cards for AI models, which measure and track various indicators of potential harm, such as the capabilities of the model, vulnerabilities, and consequences. These assessment cards are regularly updated, and intervention measures are reviewed when certain risk threshold values are reached. The production of models is managed by a security systems team. This team deals with, for example, systematic abuses of ChatGPT, which can be mitigated by restrictions or API tuning. Models in the development stage are assessed by the readiness team, which aims to identify risks before the model is released. There is also a super alignment team, working on theoretical guidelines for super intelligent models. The first two categories have a relatively understandable assessment methodology. Teams assess each model in four risk categories, cybersecurity, impact, model autonomy and a complex of threats such as chemical, biological, radiological and nuclear for example. The ability to create new pathogens. Various measures are anticipated to mitigate consequences such as restraint in describing the process of making napalm or homemade bombs. If, after considering risk mitigation measures, a model is still assessed as high risk, it cannot be deployed and if a model has any critical risks, it will not be further developed. OpenAI emphasizes strict and data-based risk assessment of artificial intelligence. Refraining from hypothetical and speculative scenarios scenarios which often dominate public discourse is a priority. OpenAI states that it invests resources in developing risk mitigation strategies and safety guarantees. The lab will continually refine and update its framework based on new data, feedback and research and will share its findings and best practices with the broader AI community. Tesla has confirmed the development of an inductive charging system for electric vehicles. Until recently, Tesla showed no interest in wireless inductive charging technology and only began working on it this year. A key factor in this decision is the intention to prepare for the emergence of autonomous electric vehicles. In the past, Tesla preferred a different method of charging electric vehicles without human involvement. In 2015, a video was released featuring a robot snake carefully inserting a plug into a parked electric car's socket. In 2020, Elon Musk personally confirmed the development of this technology, which was supposed to accompany the promised million robocars. Then there was a hint at the first interest in inductive charging technology and even a startup acquisition, which was soon sold. But some employees from this startup were hired by Tesla. No technical details, timelines, or costs of the system have been reported. However, the price is likely to be substantial, especially considering installation. In addition to the actual charging device, which attaches to a wall, an inductive platform will likely be required, which will probably need to be embedded in concrete, plus an inductive productive receiver in the car. Tesla's CEO Elon Musk has announced that the recently released electric pickup, the Cybertruck, has an important advantage over its competitors. According to him, the vehicle can cross fords and even float for a few hundred meters, provided there is no strong water turbulence. Early Cybertruck users noticed a new wade mode in the pickup settings. It turned out that the ability to cross fords is not only due to the suspension being brought to its maximum height, but also because of a hermetically sealed battery pack. Moreover, when moving through water, excess pressure is pumped into the battery pack. Following this information, a video Video surfaced online showing the Cybertruck driving along the beach and entering the water. However, no one has yet dared to demonstrate the electric pickup's ability to float in real life, which is not surprising given its limitations and high price. The main concern is to avoid the issues that other Tesla electric cars faced, which broke down due to rain. Continuing with the tech news, Apple has set the launch of its mixed reality device, Vision Pro, priced at $3,500 for the beginning of 2024. However, Apple's debut of this controversial product might be overshadowed by its main competitor, Samsung. Originally, Samsung planned to start selling its mixed reality headset, Galaxy Glass, at the end of 2024. But as reported by TechSpot, the company decided to move the release to the first half of the next year to get ahead of Apple. The Galaxy Glass is equipped with a Qualcomm processor, and its operating system is being developed in collaboration 
collaboration with Google. The alliance of Samsung, Qualcomm, and Google has led to speculation that Galaxy Glass might become the Android answer to Apple's Vision Pro. It's also known that Samsung has trademarked the phrase Flex Magic, although it's unclear if it will be used specifically for marketing this device. If this information is confirmed, the rivalry between Samsung and Apple could become even more intense in the near future. So far, official representatives at the company are keeping silent on this matter, while South Korean publications quote anonymous sources. However, if Samsung and its partners manage to release a mixed reality device at a more affordable price compared to Apple's Vision Pro at $3,500, it has a good chance of capturing a significant market share and significantly disrupting Apple's launch of a fundamentally new device category. Information about Samsung's collaboration with Google and Qualcomm on creating a mixed reality device emerged in February this year, and later the company registered the trademark Samsung glasses with the UK Intellectual Property Office. The description stated that the designation relates to virtual reality and augmented reality headsets. Interestingly, Samsung had not previously ventured into this type of device. The medical technology startup Forward has introduced CarePods, self-service medical offices equipped with artificial intelligence. In these pods, a complete body scan of the patient is performed, analyses are collected, and then a personalized observation and treatment plan is devised. According to Forward, patients will be able to enter these white, cube-shaped spaces and access a wide range of medical services, which they can select on a touchscreen. The services will include biometric body scanning, weight monitoring, needle-free blood collection for general analysis and diabetes screening. Additionally, the capability to assess the condition of the heart, thyroid, kidneys, and liver of the patient is indicated. There is also provision for diagnosing diseases like COVID-19 and HIV, as well as monitoring mental health issues. The developers promise that the technology will become more advanced over time. Forward plans to create applications that can conduct prenatal care, expanded cancer screenings, and genetic analysis to identify the risk of hereditary diseases in patients. The goal of CarePods is to make primary health care more accessible. It is anticipated that access to such mini-clinics will be available through through a monthly subscription of $99. Electric Eel, an aircraft from Ampere, has stayed airborne for a record amount of time. The first-generation smart hybrid transmission reduced fuel consumption by 50-70%, allowing the aircraft to cover an unprecedented distance. During a test flight, the Electric Eel traveled 2,113 kilometers, circling over Camarillo Airport in California. It remained in the air for exactly 12 hours. The aircraft features a pusher propeller as well as a traditional nose propeller from the Cessna 337 Skymaster Twin Tail Airliner. The two power units are completely separate and operate in parallel. In the future, Ampere plans to use a parallel configuration where a combined hybrid engine system will power the rear propeller and also transmit power to the nose propeller's electric motor. This will enable the use of recuperative pneumatic braking and allow the gasoline engine to charge the battery during flight. The current generation electric eel, despite its record endurance, needs to be charged in a hangar between flights, but the next generation model is intended to offer greater flexibility with the ability to operate solely on fuel when charging is not possible. And of course, what's a kick update without a bit of space news? NASA specialists have reported that for the first time, they have managed to transmit a high-resolution video from deep space to Earth in a record short time. The Psyche space probe, which is en route to the asteroid of the same name, used the deep space optical system to send a 15-second video from a distance of 31 million kilometers. The video features a cat belonging to one of NASA's engineers playing with a laser beam. The clip was also sent to Earth using a laser beam, and the test for data transmission took place on December 11th. During the test session, the team managed to download 1.3 terabits of data. As for the cat video, it was transmitted in 101 seconds. NASA reported that the maximum downlink speed was 267 Mbit S, and the minimum was 62.5 Mbit S. NASA noted that the Deep Space Optical System is expected to transmit data 10 to 100 times faster than traditional radio frequency space communication systems. However, the system will undergo further testing. Scientists do not plan to use it for transmitting scientific data. They are interested interested specifically in testing the technology. The system will be activated for the last time when the probe is near Mars, approximately 330 million kilometers from Earth. That's all for today. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel to not miss a fresh portion of handpicked news. Goodbye.